Okay guys, so we're back again. Man, this is just gonna be a video about me screwing up the clan boss fights. Welcome, I'm the Deadwood Jedi, and thank you guys for stopping in again today. It is always a pleasure to talk to you. Um, I have been inundated with questions about the new budget unkillable team and it is very gratifying i'm very humbled the fact that so many people are using it finding it useful for them and helpful they're being able to post new high scores but one of the things i'm noticing is there's a lot of questions about setting it up and it's not easy um, getting the stun to target your slow boy is a very much a challenge so the, i figured today what i would do is i'd go through the comp and I would give you guys some tips and tricks, some things to look out for, some advice that me and my team over at uh, my Discord have kind of discovered. Basically all day, every day, what we're doing is we're answering questions about this composition. And so I thought I would put out a lot of the answers that we came across with, the solutions we've discovered along the way, and put them in a video for you guys so you have easy access to it. And hopefully it'll make it a little bit easier for you guys to set this up for yourselves. Now, it's not easy. Don't feel bad if you're struggling with this. I struggled with this. You don't see all the keys I waste to make these compositions. It isn't simple to set up. It's easy to run, but to get there can be a little bit tricky. So don't feel bad if you're having a little bit of a hard time. But hopefully today this is going to answer a lot of your questions. We'll talk about the HP levels you need. We'll talk about the defense that you guys need. We're going to talk about the relationships between uh, the champions so that you make sure that they're the right person is getting stunned each time and you're avoiding it on champions like Maneater and Painkeeper who can't take it at all. Um, we're going to talk about little trips, tips and tricks that you can do to like make sure that even if you're struggling a little bit, it can take you over that edge and make this, sure this composition works for you. So I'm going to talk about a bunch of those things. I do want to take a moment, though. I just want to say thank you, guys. Thank you very much. I asked if you can subscribe to my videos because I knew you're watching and enjoying it, and you guys responded. We went from 6,500 subs to 8,500 subs in about a week and a half. I cannot thank you enough for doing that. The effect that has is huge. I'm now in the, le the next level of the content creator program. Uh, I'm able to get more resources, which allows me to level up champions faster. So all these rebalanced champions, I'm going to be able to put videos out about them a lot sooner. See how they work in the clan boss so you guys can get that information even faster. Um, I'm also able to give out more gems, which I'm really excited about. So instead of just one giveaway every month, we can have two of them. I'm really excited about that for you guys. Um, so definitely you're going to want to keep paying attention to the channel as I'm going to have more and more of that coming out available to you. Um, definitely check me out on Twitch. I've been enjoying that a whole bunch. But look, it's enough about me and what I'm doing right now. Uh, well, okay, one last thing. Um, I do have a Patreon. I'm putting that out today. Um, it's a great way for you guys. If you want to support my channel financially, you want to support the website financially, um, it's a great way. If you want coaching for your accounts, we're going to go through the Patreon. You want a takeover? We're going to go through the Patreon. It's going to make it nice and simple, one-stop shop, where if you need some kind of information to help from me that's a great place to go we're offering a private discord channel so your questions get answered just a little bit faster um we have i'm going to put out a monthly newsletter so you know what's coming on the website what i'm planning on working on um and uh, i'm going to actually have a, a way so you guys can see these videos i'm going to put them out like a little bit sooner about 30 minutes before i normally do so you get a quick preview and see my content before anybody else so some things I'm trying to offer for you guys, uh, trying to find a way to support not only myself, but the website um, and the content I'm able to offer to you all. So hopefully that's something that appeals to you guys. Uh, regardless, I'm just glad you're here. I'm glad you're watching. So let me go in. I'm going to talk about all the ways that we can make this composition work for us. All right, guys. So while I'm getting this composition set up right here, as we're doing Ultra Nightmare, um, first thing I want to talk to you guys about are the HP levels. This is by far the most important part about getting the stun calculator to work to getting the stun to go onto your slow boy is your hp levels what's happening is the clan boss is trying to target the person with the lowest percentage of hp on the team so once your slow boy hits zero you need him to heal up uh less than everybody else but he still has to heal up to a certain level or the clan boss won't target him um that's also really really important so being able to balance those things out is pretty crucial to making this whole thing work um it's a little hard to, to both run this and kind of have this conversation with you guys um but you can see i'm getting it all set up here for you guys so i'm going to have this running in the background 
um, as we go. And I've actually made adjustments to my original team, especially regarding HP, um, just to make sure that everything moves nice and smooth for me. Um, and so what I want you to think about the first thing is Goldilocks. And then you go, what, what does a little blonde girl and some bears have to do with it? Well, here's the thing. You don't want too much HP and you don't want too little. You want just the right amount, like Goldilocks. So you, when you're thinking about this with your, your stun boy, you want to think about having not too much HP. So you hit 50,000, you're going way over. Really, if you're hitting 45,000, you're still going way over. If you're going at 30,000, if you're less than some of your other champions, that's way too low. Now, there's always exceptions to the rules. I know there's people that can run this with a pain keeper with 60,000 HP and all sorts of random stuff. I know there's other ways to do this, but when it comes to just a general guidance and trying to set this up, especially for the first time, what you want to do is you want to find that sweet spot, that right, nice, easy place to be. And so that's kind of what we're looking for here. Now, what is that sweet spot? Well, that's a really good question. The key to it is really the relationship between Painkeeper and your slow boy. And the reason for that is Painkeeper is going to provide a really crucial part, which is that healing ability. And that healing ability, once it's booked up, heals you for about 21% of your health. Now, the or heals you up for about 21% of Painkeeper's health. At base, it's 15, but once it's all booked, it's about 21%. So what you want to make sure is that that 21% healing doesn't overheal your stun boy. It doesn't underheal him either. You need a certain percentage for the clan boss to target you. And that percentage can vary a little bit based on things like affinity and stuff. So what we're aiming for is to have it be at least 16% of the health that's being filled. That's really where the key comes in. So that's a good guidance point. I know it can work if it's lower than that. But 16% is really about the sweet spot. And so when you're looking at the stun calculator, that's kind of the percentage that you want filled there. And so that relationship between the HP of Painkeeper and uh, your Slow Boy is really important. Because if your Painkeeper has too little HP and your Slow Boy is too much, you're not going to fill up their HP bar enough to take the target. Right? So as long as that HP is actually bigger than the Painkeeper, it should work. Even if it's just a little bit. As something I would recommend is having at least a few thousand more. That's going to give you that nice little buffer so that the, the, the clan boss isn't going to accidentally target your pain keeper. That's usually the best way to go about it. So just give you uh, an idea. And like the next part kind of covers that too. I want to talk to you guys about the stun calculator. Now the stun calculator is very unique and it's a brilliant thing from Russ that he's developed. Um, but one of the things we want to do is we want to look at these percentages down here at the edge that's showing how much HP is being filled from Painkeeper. So Painkeeper is always at that 21%. But depending on the HP of the other champions, it's going to change that number. And so you want to make sure that this number for Aethar, for whoever your slow boy is, is at least 16%. If it gets under 16%, it can get a little wonky. And sometimes the targeting will, will be off a little bit. So that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about the stun calculator. And just to kind of break this down a little bit. You have the total HP here and you have the defense. This percentage mitigation, that's kind of showing how much damage is actually being done to your champion. So if the clan boss hits your champion for 10,000 damage, well, Aethar, or my slow boy, is only mitigating 49% of it. So that means, what, 51, 5,100 damage is coming through and actually being done, whereas my Rosin's mitigating almost 75% of that. So only 2,500 damage is being hit through Rosin. And so between those, that's kind of determining who's actually getting the target of the stun over here. And so based on the HP and all that. Now, one of the things with your other champions is you can have their HP be pretty low. Um, I have Septimus here at 30,000 HP, and you can see he might be the target of the stun initially. That's not a problem because he has such low HP, he's going to heal up even faster. His heals are going to be much bigger. You can see of the, of the percentage healed from uh, Painkeeper, he's the highest because he has the lowest base HP. So, you know, having that adjustment is really good. The most important thing is just, you know, keeping the defense high. And then with that HP, you want to make sure Painkeeper and your stun target are pretty close. Within a couple thousand is usually advisable, right? If it, the difference is too big, then that percentage drops too low and it's really easy th for things to go wrong. So if we had 47,000 for Aethar, it drops even further. We get up to 50,000 and we get really tight there. 
Now, it's not to say that it can't work with less than that. It can. But why why skirt the edge? Why play with fire, especially if you haven't done this before? When you're first setting it up, you want to be as simple as possible. Um, so that's the first part. Now, the second part I want to talk to you about is defense. And defense is really important. Maybe the most important part of this whole composition. And this is where I see a lot of people screwing this up. First off, it's all about the early game. It's all about the early game. It's the setup. So the defense you put on your champions is going to help mitigate the damage that they're taking. The big thing is you want your stun, your slow boy, the person taking the stun, you want them to have his, get down to zero HP as fast as possible. The sooner they're at zero HP, the sooner this becomes a reliable uh, team. The sooner the, the stuns are going to hit reliably on your slow boy. So you need them to go down to zero as soon as you can. And the best way to do that is put no, de no defense on them. Let all that damage go right through. And the other way to do that, because it's not just about their HP, but it's about them in comparison to the other teammates, is to give them more defense. So if you're having trouble getting your pain keeper or your man eater stunned, best thing you can do, raise their defense up. Make it so they're taking a lot less damage, so their HP percentage is higher. So the clan boss is going to go, oh, I don't want to hit them. I want to hit this guy. Boom. And that's the best way to go about it. you keeping their, their uh, HP in range with your stun boy, and keeping their defense super high means they're going to be taking a lot less damage, which means your slow boy is going to be the best target for this. And that's really what you want to do. Um, the more defense, the merrier. The more, the merrier, because there is no real limit to how much you can stack on. You can notice my Rosin actually has more HP. My Rosin can have the most HP on the team, but he also has so much more defense, it doesn't matter. His HP level is going to stay super high for a long, long time. And you know, when you have damage dealers that can heal up with life drinker or life steal itself, um, that's going to make a big difference too, because it's going to give them an extra boost to their HP. So one of the things I don't recommend having Rosin the most HP on your team. That's a poor example. Don't do that. Don't take what I say literally on that part. The point is, there is no limit to the amount of defense you can put on your main champions. The key is having your slow boy with the lowest defense. And that's really important. Keep that stun, the slow boy, as low defense as you can and make everybody else have as much as possible. That's really, really helpful, really key to making this work. Um, and also, beware the aura. This really comes in when you're talking about Bulwark. Bulwark is a fantastic slow boy, a wonderful lead for that because every time he gets hit, he can extend the debuffs on your uh, clan boss, and he works really good with Affinity. The key with Bulwark, though, is he does bring a defensive aura. Your slow boy doesn't have to be the lead champion. So if you're going to bring in Bulwark, I recommend don't actually make him your lead. Make an attack champion your lead. Make anybody else your lead. Don't make it Bulwark. But because that aura is going to factor the amount of defense, and that's not factored in the calculator, so you'd have to add that in as well. And like I said, you want to keep that defense super low. And since he has such a base defense, that can have an effect. One little, uh, yeah, so that's something that's something you definitely want to keep in mind. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about are the early issues. These are the things that are going to screw you up, um, especially as you're starting to get into it. The hard part about this composition isn't actually getting, isn't actually running it. It's getting into it. All right, so as we start getting into this, I want to show you guys the, this, the next part is early issues. I am going to try and do another run here, so bear with me as I try to do two things. Um, one of the issues with, uh, in the early part of this that can screw stuff up is early crits. So you have to think that if the clan boss crits, he's going to be doing more damage than he normally would. That can throw off, especially in this first cycle or two, it can throw off where the stun goes. If, since it's based off of basically the HP that you have, that can be problematic. So you want to be aware of that, and that's why we want to make sure that the gaps that we have between HP isn't too narrow. Um, we don't want our slow boy to have 100 more HP than our pain keeper because you know, that could very easily throw things off, and we want to make sure that's not going to be the case. So um, that's those are kind of little things that you want to look at um, and make sure that if you're, you know, when you're watching your run, which you guys should be doing, especially as you're setting it up, when you're watching your run, did... Is the HP level wrong because somebody got a crit in there when they normally don't? Um, if that's the case, then we want to be careful with that. Another thing we want to 
uh, watch for are arena tiers, and that's going to matter as far as like moving up or down a tier. It changes the percentage bonus that you get. It's not probably going to have a huge impact, but it can. So you want to make sure that, you know, did you just change arena tiers? Is that why your run stopped working when it's worked every time before? That could be an issue. And the last thing is affinity matters. Now, this one's actually really important. You might have noticed uh, Septimus actually got the stun there on the beginning of this run, and he's gotten it there again. Affinity matters. This is a blue affinity clan boss with a green affinity champion there. A blue affinity clan boss with a green affinity champion means that he's going to want to hit the green affinity champion. Um, so that's really important to keep that in mind. That's why my Septimus needs to be able to survive until Aethar's defense, his HP, goes down to nothing. If Septimus can't survive that, then this run will fail. And that's just a fact. So right now, my Septimus, he's real squishy. I have his defense way too low for what it should be. I'm aware of that. But I have him built enough to be able to survive to that point. Because I've run this a few times. I know that now. But when you first run this, well, don't run with a defense at 1,500, especially if it's a weak affinity champion. Make sure that they're bulky and can take it. And then from there, you can lower their defense and see how it works until you get to a point where you're like, okay, this is this is definitely going to work every time. If I go any lower, the clan boss is probably going to target them. I need to avoid that. And that's going to save you a lot of issues. Paying attention to your run is crucial guys knowing who the clan boss is targeting and why that makes a huge difference as far as the quality of your run and being able to improve upon it if you just if you go i don't know why it just fell apart i can't help you nobody can help you at that point um you need to pay attention kind of see what's going on and so affinity can have a major major impact now you can see athar is the weak affinity in this thing he's not going to want to take the the clan boss is not going to want to target him so it is tricky it's going to take a while for the clan boss to actually hit aether but once we get down to zero hp and we stay there consistently all of a sudden that's going to change this can work regardless of the affinity of your champions but it's tricky so especially early on when you're just setting this up i highly 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 recommend that you bring in a weak affinity champion to be your stun boy it just makes the most sense getting it set up early is great and then as you start to understand more and more how it works you can start to bring in other champions um, but it is possible to do it regardless of finite. You can see right there, Septimus died. We didn't, we weren't at the spot where we needed to be and it fell apart. So this is like I said, even for someone like me, where you go, oh, this is going to work perfectly. It doesn't always. Okay, guys. So we made some brief adjustments to Septimus to make it so he's not targeted. I, I mean, this is, this is how you do it. You have to go back. Exited out, went back in, made some real brief adjustments. Shouldn't be hard. Um, and did that, and now we should be good to go. Hopefully. We'll see. They're subtle adjustments. So I kind of found that edge, and I've been playing with it, trying to make it work. And now we're going against weak affinity. This is the best opportunity to fully test that, because if I can make it work against blue, I can make it work against anything. Um, and so that's really important, you know, figuring those little things out. One last thing about affinity I do want to point out, though. This is, I think, actually really important. Um, when it's very easy for the clan boss to target pain keeper or man eater if the affinities are wrong and what i mean by that is let's say all i have are red champions i have two of them in here already right i have athar and i have rosin well let's say for example i brought in vizier as well to extend buffs or debuffs um it's very easy for the clan boss to target pain keeper or man eater and the reason why is their neutral affinity being void champions they're neutral affinity and the only other options are weak affinity champions so unless athar miraculously goes down to zero hp on this first turn well the natural target would actually be man eater or pain keeper and so it becomes very important to keep that in mind. So if you're struggling with that, you might want to check the affinities of your champions. It might not have anything to do with the HP levels or anything like that. You're struggling because in the first couple cycles, you're not taking enough damage to go down to zero health anyway, even if you did nothing, no defense or nothing. So if you're getting targeted early, that might have a big part of it. The affinities. Affinities have a huge factor to play in this, guys.
the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is bring you some useful tips, some little tricks that can help make things go and some things to keep in mind. So the first thing I have up on there are hard numbers. Now hard numbers, not my favorite thing to throw out to you guys, to be honest. I prefer you understand the concepts and understand the system so you can kind of make your own decisions and create your own, your own teams. But it does provide some nice guidance points, some like some fence posts to hit type of thing. So if we're looking at hard numbers, what we want for our HP levels, I really recommend going somewhere, and I'm going to have this pop up right ahead, my, above my head, for uh, Painkeeper and the rest of your champions, I recommend having less than 35,000 health in there. Um, now, is there a limit that's too low? Yeah, I'm sure there is. What is that limit? I actually don't know. It kind of depends on your champions. But I would aim somewhere between 30 and 35,000. That's usually a pretty good spot. It gives you enough, enough HP to survive early on. Um, definitely keeps you lower than your stun, your slow boy. Um, but it's also not too much HP where you're, you know, you're not healing up at the right spot or the right amount. Um, this run's going to get a little trick. It's interesting here. We're getting to that point where we're almost down to zero. Um, and then uh, your slow boy, I recommend being between 35 and 40,000 HP. Now you can definitely run all of those numbers lower and you can run all those numbers higher. I don't necessarily recommend it. You can see Septim is barely surviving right there with a sliver of health. We've hit the edge of this, but hopefully we'll have enough HP to make this run survive at this point. Um, but yeah, 40,000 is probably about the limit I'd really aim for. Now, you can see my Aether has about 41,000 HP. I've run it with 45,000. There isn't like set numbers that work for this. It's all about the relationship. So depending on where Painkeeper is, depending on where your slow boy is, all those numbers can vary quite a bit. But if you're just looking for a guy post, something to aim for, aim for that 35 to 40,000 for your slow boy. And then you want to aim for 30 to 35,000 for the rest of them. Now, the difference between your Painkeeper and your slow boy try to keep that as pretty much as low as possible try to keep it within like you know a couple thousand uh, if it's too big that can be an issue so using the stun calculator get that six, make sure that that number is at least 16 percent or higher and that'll really help you out Thirty-five thousand for your pain keeper 40 for your slow boy that can work just fine um there's not a problem with having a bit of a variance there you just don't want that variance to be too great you don't want your pain keeper at twenty-eight thousand health and your slow boy at 45 and again we failed on this run so one more time, we'll have to give this a shot here. Okay, guys, we're gonna try this one more time here. This time, I'm super confident, and I had some. I had my pain keeper speed was off ever so slightly, and I was like, ah, that's the problem. So I'm gonna make some. Made a little bit of adjustment. Made some adjustments to Athar. I think we should be in good shape here. Um, so we're gonna try this one more time. This is not easy, guys. Uh, it's really not easy. Um, <laughs> so you gotta, you know, you you just gotta you gotta stick with it. Um, we were talking about hard numbers. So we were talking about the HP numbers between you know looking at generally looking at thirty to thirty five thousand for your uh, the rest of your team, and then about thirty five to forty thousand for your your slow boy. And I was also mentioning that those numbers aren't you know exact you have range in that lots of it um you definitely want to test it out and figure out what's going to be best for you and your team but um in general those are numbers that should work um and should give you at least a good guidepost so you know you're not screwing up because you have way too little hp or way too much hp on one champion or another um the other thing hard number wise we want to talk about definitely is defense it's the most important part about this. So now when you're first doing this, you want to be safe. You want to set it up. You want to be good with everything. What you really want to aim for is as little defense as possible for your slow boy. Aim for a thousand defense. Just aim for it. It's pretty hard to get there, honestly, to have a team with no defense on it. You'd be surprised. But aim for a thousand defense. That's going to be your safest bet on making it work. Um, as far as uh, your, the rest of your champions, then, double the defense of your slow boy. Whatever it is, double it. If you do that, you're probably going to be in pretty good shape. If you're looking for a hard number, I recommend 2.3K. Uh, so 2,300 
is a really good number, I think, for the defense to give you kind of a target to shoot for. Um, that's what I would recommend as far as that goes. Um, so aim for those numbers, I think, would be the best the best bet. Aim for 2,300 defense on you, the rest of your champions and 1,000 defense on your slow boy. If you have more than, say, 1,500 defense, you have too much. You need less than that. I mean, really, I'm pushing the limit with my Aethar, and I think I have about four, almost 1,400 on them. Like, it's really pushing the limit. I would like it to be as low as possible. You can see uh, Aethar's defense is actually not going down nearly enough. I know it's hard to see with the overlay, but um, it's not going down nearly enough right now. If you can see right there, his HP is still super high. And the part of the problem is his defense is too high. He's mitigating too much damage. You really want that to be as low as possible. So 2,300 defense for most of your champions, 1,000 defense for your slow boy, 35 to 30, 30 to 35,000 HP for the rest of your champions, 35 to 40,000 for your slow boy. And you got to make sure Pain Keeper has the second highest amount of HP. So it takes cost silver to regear. The last thing you want to do is be halfway through your regearing and run out of silver and then be frustrated and angry about that like it's somebody's fault besides your own. You got to save up the silver. You got to have it ready there if you're going to do that. That's just name of the game. Without the silver, you can't do anything. So make sure that you have enough silver to do the regearing properly. Um, save your keys. You've seen me. I've screwed this up like three or four times already. What do I do? I exit out of the game so I don't lose my key. D there's no reason for you guys to be wasting gems trying to make this composition work when you can just exit the game and start again. It's a great thing that Polarium added. It makes it so much easier to do this regearing and stuff. Um, and so for some reason we died again. So clearly I do not know what I am doing right now. <laughs> exit the game. Save your key. Okay, guys, we were just talking about a couple different things. <laughs> that key save came at the most opportune time I've ever seen. Um, but I had to go back and watch the video and kind of diagnose what went wrong. And uh, this kind of synergized with a couple things we've been talking about. Um, one of those things being affinity. And what happens when you have a weak affinity champion and two void champions. But what it looks like to me is that Maneater doesn't have enough HP more than what Aethar has, even on the heal up, even on the heal up from zero. And so, because, and the reason why is because Aethar is the weak affinity. That difference needs to be more than it would normally. And because he didn't proc the War Master hit on his first attack and didn't heal up much from the Life Drinker, that screwed everything up. And so, Maneater became the target. Because he's neutral affinity, a lot friendlier target for the clan boss to attack. Now, you might be wondering, well, why Maneater? Why not Septimus? Septimus is our attack champion. He hits so hard every time, even on weak hits, that he's healing enough with Life Drinker to take his HP over that threshold. So he's not going to get targeted by the clan boss when they all start at zero. Maneater doesn't have that luxury. I don't have his stuff all geared out. He's not hitting especially hard. So his heal off the life drinker mastery isn't as strong and this is also something to keep in mind if you have level 50 champions or not leveled up that can be an issue you know if you're not healing enough off life drinker you really have to rely on the hp difference to make to make the the targeting go where you want it's also a good reason why you bring in a weak affinity champion to tank the stun so you don't have to worry about any of this stuff makes it a whole lot easier another reason why bulwark's good he's not weak affinity but he's neutral affinity, which will make this targeting stuff a lot easier as well. So some things to keep in mind. Uh, but you can see the importance of saving the key. I've done this run about five or six times just trying to film this thing in the last hour. And I've only used one key. One key for the successful night Ultra Nightmare run I did. And I'm probably going to use one more key when this run becomes successful itself. That's it. So you can see how this can be... Uh, really, really helpful saving yourself keys. The last thing, Lifesteal Immortal, Immortal Gear. So if you guys are really, really struggling with this, there's a simple like hack really to make it work. Put Lifesteal or put Immortal Gear on your champions. Um, again, we failed there, so that's exciting. Let's try this one more time. Okay, guys, so we're back again. Man, this is just going to be a video about me screwing up the clan boss fights. 
this time what happened was I had made changes to Septimus's kit because, you know, he got the target early on. Didn't realize that it screwed up his uh, speed. Uh, just ever so slightly. Off by one. So there you go. Uh, it's it's complex doing this, guys. And that actually brings me to my last point. By the way, real quick. Lifesteal and Immortal Gear. It's easy hack. Just gives you a little extra HP. So you don't have to rely fully on Painkeeper to do the healing. Just don't heal your slow boy. Use Lifesteal and Immortal Gear on your other champions. It can be enough sometimes to take you over that edge. Just give you that little bit extra so you're not being targeted. But all these failed runs really brings me to my last point, and this might be the most important point of everything. Have patience. Have patience. Forgive yourself for the mistakes you make. Have patience that it's going to take a little time to make this work. This is, I mean, literally, I don't even know how many keys I've used so far. And that's not abnormal. You're trying to make something you've never made before. It is difficult. It is extremely difficult. Don't beat yourself up over it. Have the patience, have the understanding that, you know what, it's not going to work every time. Sometimes you do have to reset. Sometimes you're going to go to bed and you're not going to get your chest keys because, you know what, you couldn't figure it out. And that's okay. That's okay. You're not always going to get it right. It's a difficult thing to set up. Don't beat yourself up over it. The stun targeting is a real unique mechanic. I avoided doing this comp for a long time because of that and I didn't understand it. And even now, nobody fully understands how it works. But we have pretty good guidance that can make the... We can we can get the actual uh, effect that we want. But, like, the actual mechanics, the real, like, nitty-gritty, this is what happens, this is when they're going to do this, nobody really knows. We just have really good guidance of how to do it. Once you get it up and running, it's great. It works. It, it'll work great for you. You won't have any issues, and you can use it for three difficulties. It's a fabulous composition. And when you're just focusing on one difficulty, it makes it a lot easier. But don't don't kill yourself if you struggle a, sp a few times into this, you know? It's not a panacea, but it is an amazing tool for us to have. It's an amazing option for so many of you to be able to choose. And that's what's so great about it. And that's why I'm so happy that people are choosing it, that we are using it, and that it's there for you guys. Just, you know, be easy on yourselves. Brief recap, right? Uh, the HP levels are crucial. Getting your defense up is huge, making sure that's the case. Uh, making sure there's a balance between your champions, both on HP and defense level, that really matters and helps affect things in a positive way. So you definitely want to be able to do that. Um, affinity is crucial. I'm completely flummoxed on this run right now, and a big part of that is that Septimus is getting targeted every single time for these stunts. You know? Uh, that's a hit shoe. That shouldn't be happening, but it is happening, so I'm probably going to have to go back to the drawing board and make this work a different way. Have patience with yourselves. You know? you got to have patience with yourselves. Sometimes even the best laid plans don't work. Save your keys. Save your silver. Plan it out. This run's already screwed. I'm just going to let it run out today because I've done it too many times. That should give you an idea of how hard this can be sometimes, you know. You want to be smart about it. You want to be careful with it. But sometimes even the best laid plans don't work. So be patient with yourselves um, when you're trying to do this thing. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this is helpful for you. Hopefully this will uh, help you along the way. I'm going to try and make this stupid run work. Um, I will get it before the end of the day, guaranteed. Um, but yeah, this, it's just a challenge. You know, making sure your, 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 your numbers are balanced is really key to making this whole thing work. Um, it has been a pleasure. If you like the video, click the like. Uh, subscribe always if you can. I really do appreciate that. And go ahead and comment down below. Let me know what you think of all my failed runs. Does that make you feel better about yourself? Because I think it should. Hopefully there's some real good advice that you guys were able to take out of this and it'll make your runs better in the future and make this comp a little easier for you guys to understand. We answer a lot of questions in the Discord. Much thanks goes out to uh, Bobo, uh, Rust, uh, Splitty, uh, 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 Vorage, uh, Wistix, um, uh, Oh gosh, I know I'm forgetting people, but everybody in my Discord just really awesome. They've been great answering questions and they help put a lot of this guide together for you guys. So hopefully that's helpful for you. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for stopping by. Always a pleasure to talk. Uh, if you have more questions, stop by my Twitch. I tend to answer a bunch of them in there. Um, and we are there basically four days a week. Check out my Patreon. I'm really excited about that. Uh, if you're looking to uh, help the site financially, it's a great way to do that. If you want some account takeovers or coaching, that's another great way to do that. So. Thank you guys very much. Till next we meet, I am the Deadwood Jedi.